In today's video, I'm gonna run through a simple movement that you must get right in your golf swing. Get it wrong and you are gonna make golf so much harder than it needs to be. So in today's video, we are talking about the shaft plane in our golf swing, making sure we can swing it correctly around our body. If we do so, we're gonna promote a lot of good movement patterns that will happen naturally. Get it wrong, you're gonna be making a whole load of compensations. The more compensations you're having to make, the harder golf is gonna become. And frankly, we wanna make golf nice and easy. Now, this is a pattern that I'm gonna go through today that you will see with 95, 96, 97% of tour pros out there. The reason for it, it's the most efficient pattern to swing. Let's not focus on the bad, let's focus on the good. First of all, what I have here is two golf clubs. This is my ball to target line but pretty much draw a line from the golf ball all the way to the target. This is what these two golf clubs are representing. Now, this is very much gonna be our reference marker for the swing. Now, the second check marker we're gonna use is the lead arm parallel position. So lead arm parallel in the backswing, lead arm parallel in the downswing. So first of all, what are we looking to see? Well, we are looking to see that this golf club can pretty much stay in a relatively neutral position uh, compared to the ball to target line. Now, here's the thing it's very, very hard to swing it up and down on exactly the same plane. So what we tend to do as golfers and golf coaches, we tend to promote this, is swinging on what we class as a steeper to shallower motion. Now, first of all, what does this look like? Second of all, what's the science behind it? Well, first of all, what it looks like is as we swing back, we get back to around this left arm parallel position. You can see my hands are roughly in line with my trail armpit. In this position, rather than point this alignment stick at that golf club or ball to target line, I want to point it just slightly inside. So let's just say, for simplicity's sake, let's go one club head inside that ball to target line. In theory, that's where we want this. Just super, super simple. One club head inside that ball to target line. Now from there, as we then come back down into this position in the downswing, so lead arm parallel, we want this button of the grip now to be pointing about one club head outside the ball to target line. So this is what we class as a steep to shallow pattern. Now notice, this is something I see a lot of amateurs get wrong, is they go right in the downswing, I wanna shallow this club as much as possible. You know, I'm going to the top and I'm feeling this and I'm trying to get this pointing, you know, a whole club length outside of the ball to target line. Now it might feel like that, but just know in reality, when you're analyzing your swing, you only want it to be pointing slightly outside the ball to target line. I'll chuck some images up on the screen now, just so you can sort of see some tour pros and, and have some relatable images for this. Now, what is the science behind this? Very, very simple, don't worry, we're not gonna go too crazy with this. So every club has a center of mass, which is basically just the, the balance point of the club, the middle point of the club. And you can see it's roughly right here. Now, whatever we do in the backswing, we tend to do the opposite in the downswing. AKA, in the backswing, if we swing this club back a little bit steeper, so it's pointing inside the ball to target line just slightly, this center of mass is gonna be a little bit more vertical and over my hands. Now, what's the opposite? Well, it's obviously dropping behind us. Now, if we were to do this in the downswing and drop it slightly behind, you can now see the center of mass is further behind my hands. This has produced a steep to shallow pattern. Like I said, 96, 97% of tour pros, they do this pattern. Why is this pattern really beneficial? Well, it's the most efficient way for most golfers to swing the golf club. I know there's a couple of exceptions to this. Uh, Fitzy, Matthew Fitzpatrick, great example of an exception. But again, he does reroute that club back into a great delivery position on the way down. So essentially, if we can go slightly steeper relative to shaft plane to slightly shallower, we're gonna be in a great delivery position. And then from there, we can just pivot and rotate through the shot. Again, it's gonna be the easiest way of swinging this golf club. Now that we know the science, now we know what we're looking for. We're trying to get this club relatively working on plays. How do we train it? So as you can see right now, it is winter. It is extremely cold, it's about zero degrees Celsius. So most people are not gonna be out on a golf course. So the first exercise I'm gonna give you is what I call mapping. Now mapping, the purpose of mapping is to really just develop the feels of what this is supposed to feel like. And you can do this inside. You do not need to hit a golf ball. So I've got an alignment stick in this situation right here. I'm just gonna place it down the lead side of the club. Then I'm gonna set up to the ball. Now, as I swing back, I'm gonna go super slow. Again, when this has got nothing to do with speed. This is just about learning the correct motion. As we take this club back, I'm gonna focus on getting back to this left arm parallel position and feeling like, and just checking and looking that this alignment stick is pointing just inside the golf club right there. 
Now, once I've done that a couple times, maybe I've gotten used to that feeling. Okay, I've got it pointing just inside. I'm gonna to continue to the top of the backswing. Again, this is gonna show me where my backswing is. With a, goal, with a iron, you want this roughly pointing just in front of you. So you can sort of see the camera's offset slightly this way. It's pointing just towards the camera. And then from there, so steeper on the way down, you wanna come back to a slightly shallower position to where it points maybe around a club head outside of that golf club right there. So you can go pretty much, let's just say one club head inside, one club head outside. And here's the thing, you can do 100 reps of these a day at home in the winter, even in the summer, maybe you're in between work calls or something. You could just st stand there, do these mapping, mapping exercises really, really slow, making sure you can start to feel it. Now, once you've done that a couple of times, again, let's just imagine we're still doing the mapping. Let's now try and do it without the alignment stick. Again, go nice and slow, feel like we can hit that good position good. And then on the way down, back into this position. One way of just making this even harder is by doing it with your eyes closed. So sort of developing your senses. As soon as we take away a sense, suddenly everything else has to be a lot more heightened. So you'll start to feel it with your forearms, your wrists, things like that, a lot more. So once you've gone through the mapping stage, now let's say we are building up to hitting some shots. So what I actually like to do, rather than hit shots with the alignment stick, it gets in the way, is actually grab a tee and place it in the butt end of the grip. Now, the great thing about this is it just sort of offers just that little bit extra visual feedback and Scotty Scheffler they did a video uh, a couple months ago um, and he uses a tee with his golf coach to sort of just map out where his shaft plane is going so it's a really really nice simple drill so you can see the tee is just in the butt end of the grip I'm just going to do some rehearsal swings feeling like I get that tee pointing just inside and then on the way down have it pointing just outside I've left that alignment stick there again it's a good sort of foot or so uh, part of behind the golf ball um, this is going to be a great sort of reference guide also if if you do tend to hit it a little bit fat, this can also just help you promote your low point moving forwards, just sort of as a side bonus right there. So I'm just gonna do a rehearsal swing, feel like I get the tee pointing inside and then pointing outside. Then from there, I'm just gonna step on in and I'm not gonna hit a full shot yet. I'm gonna go at say, let's say 50, 60% speed. Just learn what it feels like to get that club working a little bit steeper to then a little bit. Now, once you've done that a couple times and you start to get used to that feeling, I want you to take the alignment stick away and then use this T as just your sort of guide. Go right, steeper to shallower. And again, we're not trying to see this club go all over the place, becomes very, very inconsistent, just hard to time. And I say, look at a golfer like Matt Wolf. You know, fantastic, phenomenal golfer. Super, super steep backswing, super shallow downswing, but he's not necessarily the most consistent golfer in the world. I look at someone more like a Justin Rose, who, you know, very, sort of steady golfer, phenomenal golfer, you know, major winner, um, but his swing's just a little bit more on plane. It's just a little bit a little bit more consistent in my opinion. I believe just swinging it just that slight steep to shallow pattern is gonna be a little bit more consistent. Now once you've done that a couple times, again, now you wanna to start to hit some fuller shots, get that steeper pattern, shallower on the way down, use that alignment stick, uh, use that T in the button of the grip, and then from there, hit some shots. So let's see if we can do it right here. Steeper to shallower. So there you have it. By swinging the club just that little bit more efficiently on the way back, on the way down, you are gonna find that it is going to be so much easier for you to develop that consistent, repeatable golf swing. Now, if you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and subscribe. I also offer online coaching, so if you need some more one-to-one -one help, the link is down in the description.